Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and hello to colleagues in uh, Pakistan, London, and India, who I know are watching this live stream. Greetings from New York. Well, you've all seen the exhibition, I'm sure, and you've all bought and read the book by now. <laughs> so it, there's nothing left for me to do, I thought, but show you some of my holiday snaps. Um, <laughs> because, uh, yes, I have indeed made sure that I've had some uh, great adventures. Th uh, but this part of the presentation is really where uh, further field research, uh, where I had to go without, without the benefit of Susan's company, especially Pakistan. Um, but uh, I was um, enormously fortunate through the um, uh, hospitality of the British Council in, in Lahore and uh, the support of Sandra Kemp and in Lahore, Nadra Khan, uh, for making this visit possible and, and for coming back in, in one piece, uh, I'm, uh, as you can see. Um, the real reason I had this big surprise in going to Kipling's own museum, Rod Lockwood Kipling's own museum uh, in Lahore, was that it sits in a, a parallel universe to the Victorian Art Museum in South Kensington. It is in part of a, a culture complex of public buildings, which I hadn't anticipated, a university, an art school, a museum. Uh, uh, the one thing that South Kensington in London lacks is a, a zoo, which uh, this complex has and which contributed to the museum. Um, we all know Lahore from the opening pages of Kim and from the films, and one thing that particularly uh, intrigued me uh, was how the museum would look. Uh, this comic uh, realization from the Cold War era, 1958, uh, an American comic uh, is obviously uh, playing to the, the great game idea of uh, the, the risk of Russian expansion uh, in, into India in the 1860s, continuing in the 1960s. But uh, what I found there was, well here from the opening pages of Kim, is the visit to the museum. You know this pen portrait, this tribute from Rudyard to his father where uh, the, the young boy Kim brings the visiting Lama from Tibet to meet the curator who is called in the book the keeper of images in the Wonder House. Well, I, I've always thought that was my job really. Um, but you can see this very noble image of the curator which is not quite the sort of Father Christmas figure that Lockwood Kipling was and this grand museum. Well, at that time uh, it looked more like that. That is uh, where Kipling spent most of his career in Lahore in the uh, temporary exhibition building for the Punjab International Exhibition of 1864 and he spends much of his career in Lahore 1875 to 93 designing uh, the new museum that he's, that he's hoping that he does finally get built with the help of uh, Bairam Singh and um, Rim Ganga Ram, the engineer, uh, official engineer for the area. The other great surprise, the d delight in Lahore, was to find how famous Lockwood Kipling is. When you say Kipling in England, it usually means Rudyard or a brand of cake. Uh, everybody has to pull your leg about uh, Mr. Kipling's exceedingly good cakes in England. Um, uh, but in Lahore, you say the word Kipling, and it means Lockwood Kipling. And uh, one reason being his portrait hangs both in the museum and in the art school. So. This is the, the sort of role of honor of, of founder directors of the museum uh, and where Kipling's portrait <coughs> hangs. Within the Victorian Albert Museum, I've been able to locate many photographs uh, commissioned by Kipling uh, in Lahore of his own museum's collection. That These photographs he then sent back to London as a good a bit of PR, I think. And you can see in the background the, uh, the outdoor colonnade of that museum building and these superb Gandharan sculptures which rapidly became his claim to fame as a scholar uh, through the opportunities of uh, collecting these from excavations uh, uh, in the Punjab on the borders with Afghanistan. And then to find the actual sculptures alive and well, well many of them alive and well in Lahore, I'll come on to uh, where some of them are today slightly later. But also in the museum were objects that he had illustrated in the Journal of Indian Art. So it was trying to, and of course always looking for potential loans to this exhibition. So there is the museum today and above the door you may recognize high up the original uh, bust, the Buddha bust, of which Kipling made the plaster cast and sent back one of 73 plaster casts he made of these sculptures to send back to what became the Victorian Albert Museum. So this is uh, 
one of it is the top museum of Pakistan today. And then within the registers, the accession archives of the museum in Lahore, there were uh, gifts uh, made to the museum, uh, things presented by Mrs. Kipling, you can see annotated on the right there, jewelry and, um, and things purchased from Bairam Singh, who was his star pupil and, and successor at the school. And also some things that perhaps, well, may not have been quite so welcome, uh, donated by the curator of the menagerie next door. So um, animal skins and dead parrots and things which he felt obliged to deal with. Um, so next door to the um, museum is the National College of Art of Pakistan, today the leading art school of, of Pakistan. And uh, it was a real pleasure to meet uh, the curators, the students. Uh, in a way, it felt like the V&A must have felt when the Royal College of Art was still in the V&A building, which was the students left only quite recently. But I was uh, delighted to meet the director of the art school, Dr. Muttatsa Jaffrey, and uh, in his office to find another portrait of Kipling, uh, which every prospective student being interviewed by him has been looking down on them. So he's, his presence is very strong. Also in that office, uh, sculptures by Kipling, you can see signed on the back there, JLK, too fragile to travel, and furniture made by, by Ram Singh. The art school is flourishing, uh, but the big surprise for me was although the crafts tradition is, is very strong still, it had been interrupted. I had not appreciated that Pakistan um, did not embrace the crafts tradition in the same way as India, and we'll come on to this la later with the papers from the scholars, but uh, whereas India was very happy with this idea of the village crafts for its national identity, uh, Pakistan looked west after 1947. And I learnt of a director appointed in 1958 from America, from uh, University of Oregon, uh, Mark Ritter Spunenberg, who was one of the Monuments Men working in Germany before he, he got this job. And, um, and he had looked more towards abstract expressionism. So there was this interruption in, in the crafts tradition of the Mayo School of Art. And it, when, when under him it becomes the National College of Art, uh, instead of the Mayo School of Art, his curriculum focused on fine art, architecture, and design. So there, it, it, there has been an interesting political reorientation of the school I in its past, and it, we had a conference there, and there was heated debate between the students today and their teachers uh, about, what, about why they weren't being taught about Lockwood Kipling. So sorry if anybody in Pakistan is, is watching, but it was, um, I just stood back and saw uh, a conference take off. Uh, when it's, there's nothing better, I hope today we'll see some heated exchanges in the same way. Uh, so in the, uh, the, um, the school's archive, thanks to uh, Omar Nadim Tara, previous director of that branch of the art school, the archives yielded up many photographs, and here you see this uh, young Father Christmas with his, surrounded by his students and teachers uh, preserved a, a picture that's hanging in the school, and also photographs of exhibitions he curated that we have sourced for some of the graphics from the in, in our exhibition. This is the Calcutta exhibition, 1883, uh, the Punjab section by, by Kipling. Of course, I was fascinated to see the architecture that he designed, as he'd written about architecture in the Journal of Indian Art, I wanted to see his buildings. And Aitchison College, which is the leading public school of Pakistan, is, is a building that he designed with Bayram Singh and Swinton Jacobs, and is uh, a very interesting fusion of Sikh, Mughal, and Hindu motifs, and uh, uh, that was important to study with our hosts. Across the street from the, from the art school, in this, as I say, this uh, complex, this cultural forum, rather like the V&A sits in within South Kensington, is the University of, Pun of Punjab, uh, which is clearly signed, uh, the only building that is signed uh, in its foundation stone by Bayram Singh as architect. So this was the woodcarver student who uh, grows up to become uh, Pakistan's leading architect of, architect of the time and Kipling's eventual successor as principal of the art school. And so into the walled city. So this culture forum has been built by the British outside the old city. And if we go into the walled city, I was in looking for um, evidence we knew from the Journal of Indian Art, Wazir Khan's mosque, he, these watercolors of it are in the journal that Kipling published. 
painted by his students, but to see the real thing, as you see on the left and, and the middle, and some details of those watercolours. And, and, and to be, it was marvellous to see in what good preservation it was. Kipling was encouraging his students to make record drawings for conservation reasons, as well as to encourage them to find sources of inspiration in the decoration of the great mosque there. We had in the V&A photographs of buildings, fragments that Kipling had sent back and said, would you like me to acquire this for you? And indeed, we managed to tie those up with things, as Susan said, in our deep storage, which are now in the exhibition. And we had, as we, just as with the Gandharan sculpture, so Kipling had commissioned photographs of the old town. And these are now of great value to the conservation architects in Lahore who are working to restore uh, the, this uh, fascinating um, uh, sort of village in the sky, everything, you're always getting a stiff neck from looking up at this, uh, c because the carving is the speciality of the Punjab, and Kipling himself had sketched it, and these wonderful narrow streets with everything up, up high above. But I had to go on to Chandigarh, um, to the other capital of the Punjab, the capital of the Indian Punjab, so Lahore is the capital of, of the Pakistan Punjab today, and was the ancient capital of Punjab, and then um, you all know Le Corbusier in the 1960s designs the Indian new city, the perfect city of Chandigarh. And the reason I had to go there was that in 1947, when partition happens after that, the curators, I'm afraid, were very busy dividing the collections. So much of what Kipling had s collected for Lahore is now in Chandigarh, and there's a lot of research still to be done there, but it's how marvellous to see a museum designed by Le Corbusier on the right and uh, the interior of the museum that he designed and, and laid out as well. But and so on to Shimla, or Simla as it used to be called, the summer capital of the Raj, where I was invited to speak at a, a conference on, uh, on Rudyard Kipling at the Indian Institute of Advanced Study, which is in this, the former Viceregal Lodge by Henry Irwin right on the top of a, a mountain overlooking the Himalayas. So this was a tough assignment, as you can see. Um, all I knew about Shimla uh, was we had, again, more photographs. In, uh, we have 30,000 topographical photographs in the V&A uh, to catalog. And, uh, but so I knew these bizarre buildings. I'd read uh, Philip Davies's book on uh, British colonial architecture in India who described it as a sort of mix of the Wild West and a Swiss Alpine village. And, um, and of course, Kipling's own writings about it, such as the Phantom Rickshaw um, and uh, Under the Diodars. So it's a mythical place to me. Um, I expected to find Disneyland, quite honestly. Uh, we knew that the, uh, this drawing it is in the exhibition is Sign Schimmler, so that Kipling had been working there. He spent a lot of time, and just on the right, how these drawings were first shown in London in 1871. And as Susan showed you, this tortuous journey uh, uh, to get to this mountaintop village. And today, uh, it was the six-hour train ride, the toy train, which is a, a heritage site in itself, climbing up the Himalayas. And like sort of Jack and the Beast, or getting to the top of the, of the, of the uh, mountain village, this is the view from Peterhof, the Vice Regal Lodge. As I said, this is my, I couldn't resist showing you my holiday snap, so <laughs> apologies for this. And then you have these, this sort of, you sort of, um, uh, well, Harrogate, I think, might be the fairest to say. <laughs> Tunbridge Wells uh, in, the, in, the, in the clouds uh, with, this, with nothing between the terraces of houses. And, and I knew that Kipling and his students had painted murals in the church. So I was looking for evidence uh, and uh, places that are well written about in, in Rudyard's stories. But the conference was, was in the, this lodge, which is the setting for, um, for many uh, balls that Alice uh, Kipling's wife charmed successive viceroys at and helped his career advance as a result. But inside, this is uh, in the middle photograph and two historic photographs, try, wondering why Kipling didn't make any furniture or do the decoration. Maples were the firm who seemed to have done it all. So I'm afraid came away empty-handed from there. So that, that's enough of my holiday snaps. I could spend all afternoon, I promise you. I'd love to. But we have some wonderful speakers lined up. And, but the question of the theme of this conference, you know, really an exhibition should open up a subject. Not, it lo may look like the definitive book, but it's really just out there, hopefully, to inspire many new PhDs and people to read um, the literature. But uh, what, are the, what are we going to 
um, discovered today of Kipling's further legacy beyond his work as an artist. There's quite a lot of large nostalgia around this year um, with these films coming out, uh, Victoria and Abdul. We've had this TV series set in similar in, in England that's meant to be uh, the new, um, uh, um, I've forgotten its name now, Come, Downton Abbey, thank you. <laughs> Downton Abbey in the Himalayas. They spent millions making it. And of course, Viceroy's House, which is, which is a well-balanced and, and, and critical film of the British. Um, so, there, uh, and of course, this, this year, the, these, are, these are coming out because it's 70 years since 1947, since the birth of modern India and of Pakistan. So can we go beyond this rather glamorous view of, of, it, of India and the young Pakistan? Uh, the other way of looking at the legacy is, of course, the, the, as I said earlier, this image of India as uh, crafts heritage, essentially. And many airports uh, in the world have this chain store, 10,000 villages as the sort of brand of India.